for, for me, um, internet freedom is about the ability of uh, public uh, actors, public voices to have an influence on the shape of an infrastructure that's still very much in development, but will have crucial uh, influences for decades to come. And this is a critical formative period. And for me, internet freedom means bringing those voices, and those perspectives to bear on the process of uh, internet development. What's the biggest threat? Well, I think there's, it's hard to say. There are many threats. Uh, I think uh, the recent scandal ar around, or the revelation, shall we say, around the NSA, the way in which it has got its hooks in multiple ways into the very fabric of the internet is a fundamental threat. I think also, and connected to it, is the way in which the large corporations that uh, operate key aspects of it are, are getting larger and larger and less and less accountable. Uh, and that's another major threat. Uh, those, those two, I think, will suffice for, for, uh, for major concerns. Absolutely. Would you tell us briefly about the NSA prison thing for us, for an undergraduate audience, to explain it? Okay. The, the NSA has had a long history. Who, uh, who is the NSA? Uh, the NSA is the National Security Agency. It's um, the, a U.S. agency that uh, has historically been into signals intelligence, I mean, Cold War stuff of trying to intercept signals around the world to figure out what the enemy is doing. Uh, since uh, the end of the Cold War, it has shifted its orientation and is now looking much more domestically, um, uh, basically to protect the U.S. state in part from, its, uh, from U.S. citizens and other kinds of activities around the world. And um, what they have been doing, particularly since 9-11, uh, is uh, building equipment into the main centers of the internet routing. Um, these are big buildings in big cities where 90, 95% of the internet traffic passes through. They split the packets, they make an exact copy of everything passing through those internet exchange points. And now they're building a huge data center um, in Utah where they can store all of the stuff for long periods of time. That's the uh, so-called the warrantless wiretapping program. They're also doing two other things that have been come out in the news recently. The PRISM program is uh, their access to the uh, internet uh, service providers like Google and Facebook and Microsoft and Apple where they can access their databases directly uh, to get information on subscriber. Technically, that's much easier challenge than having to intercept packets and reconstitute them on the fly. That's te more technically challenging. And the third thing that's come out just recently is um, a, uh, I guess it's a, a FISA court judgment, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act court, that um, uh, requires telecom companies, notably Verizon in this case, but I'm sure it applies to others, to get um, the metadata the, the data about communications, um, who call, uh, what number called, what other number, when and for how long, to collect that on a, on a comprehensive basis um, and do that uh, more or less in, in real time. And so uh, that's actually, we've known about that for some time, but, but it's come out again in the, in the news. So these three different programs, they're probably not all of them, but those are the ones that are now out there in the public. And um, that's, I think by far the most comprehensive form of, of surveillance uh, domestically um, in history. And um, if we don't react strongly to this and, and find that this is inimical to what we understand to be you know, a democratic process, um, then I think we're in for deep trouble because the, basically we'll see our state's inclusion with corporations as having basically taken over um, the very uh, fabric of our communications um, from a technical level but also in terms of what we can say, um, who we can do it with, um, and this is really challenging to very basic notions of, 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 um, of a democratic society.